Folks at home, the day we have all been waiting for has finally come. Today, we are going to be putting our two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde, into our backyard pond. But first, I've got a quick surprise for you. So if you watched our last video, we added a crappie and a catfish. And throughout the week, I've been watching these guys, and the crappie swims around. He's kind of a friendly little guy, and the catfish hides up under a rock until nighttime. So Liz said I should go catch another pet crappie so he'd have a friend to hang out with. So let me roll a quick clip of that. There we go. Oh yeah, good one. Yes sir. Yes sir, nice one. That is a perfect size crappie right there. Mm -hmm. Slab. So we had a major storm right after I got off the water. It dumped about four inches of rain on us, so I wasn't able to film us releasing him into the pond, but there he is right there. He's doing great. Him and the other crappie have been hanging out side by side. We'll be able to film it when the sun comes up here in a little bit. But on a positive note, the two drains we installed worked like a champ. So now that the physical structure of the pond is ready to go, we got one last thing to do before adding the fish. We're gonna do a quick water test. We got two different tests we're gonna run to make sure that the water parameters are like they should be. The water is really clear. You can see all the way down to the bottom, but you need to make sure that we've cycled the pond before we add the fish to it. All right, the first test I did measured the water's alkalinity and we are at about 5 dKH, which is a, right around the range we wanna be. So next up, we're gonna measure the copper in the water. All right, the copper levels checked out good. We're a little less than 0.2 parts per million. So all the water parameters checked out. We just checked the nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia. Check out the two crappies sitting on there. So now it is time. What we're gonna do is go in with one bass per day. So we're gonna put Clyde in today and then Bonnie in tomorrow. Liz, you ready? I think we're gonna put them in right here. All right, time to go check out the deep water, it looks like. We seem to be doing just fine, not panicking really. I'm probably happy to have some more space and not be around Bonnie. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens when he sees the crappie. He had not seen a different fish in at least a year. Oh, you know, testing him. He didn't go for the bait. Here's the crappie. There's Clyde. We're gonna make sure Clyde acclimates really well tonight, and then we're gonna come back out tomorrow and put Bonnie in. They got plenty of bait down in there. You see all the minnows swimming around. Two crappie in here, a catfish, some baby catfish. It's a complete backyard pond. He's cruising now. If that were Moby, he would have busted those, that little school of minnows. I can guarantee it. All well, three of them in one frame. Crappie number one up top, Clyde here, crappie number two. All right, time for an update. Clyde's been in about five hours and you are not gonna believe what's happening. He's actually chasing the crappie around. He's claimed this little deep water spot right here for his own. So we've had them in tanks their whole lives and if they ever have leftover food in the tank, that's when they get a little aggressive because even if they're not hungry, they think that that's all the food that they're gonna get. So they try to block other fish from getting it. Funny thing is there's about five dozen minnows in here and not one of them is hanging out in the deep end. He's ran every one of them off. They're all hiding up under the waterfall and over here in these shallow areas. But it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna head back inside. Hopefully the crappie will survive tonight. Maybe when Bonnie gets in here, They'll all get along, who knows. But right now it's kind of survival of the fittest. This is just like it would be out in the wilds. All right, Bonnie, enjoy your last night in a 300 gallon aquarium. And I guess since Clyde isn't in here anymore, we can go ahead and remove that divider. You can hang out with Cher for one last night. All right, I just pulled it out. Now she's heading over to look for Clyde. Clyde's not in there. All right, I removed the divider and the funny thing is, Cher stayed on his side, Bonnie stayed on her side, but I think I've got something that'll entice her to come out. Do it. Don't do it when that man's beat up. There's a sight I thought I'd never see. Bonnie turning down the minnow, man. You make one small change 
taking a divider out and it spooks them. I know one fish that will eat these minnows. This little guy ain't even gonna let him hit the water before he's attacking. He said, give it to me now, look at him. Man, that's one vicious bass. All right, Moby, it's your turn. Got him. All right, it's time for a morning update. Clyde here is doing great. One of the crappies wasn't doing so well. He, I guess he picked on him throughout the night. The biggest crappie wasn't doing well, so I just went and released him. But the baby crappie, or the smaller one, is hanging out right up under the lily pads here. He's doing really good. I guess he's just hiding from Clyde, and Clyde hadn't been messing with him. Maybe he just doesn't know where he's at. So now it's time to bring the big girl Bonnie in. All right, here she goes. What do you think about your new home, Bonnie? In just a minute, you'll be seeing Clyde. I'm trying to spot Clyde. Oh, there they are. Then they meet again. Bonnie and Clyde in their new pond. Interested to see how they react. They hadn't really been able to interact in about four months. Checking out the skimmer. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm amazed at how easy you can see them in here. We ought to have a lot of good feeding videos. Look at how much bigger Bonnie is than Clyde. Here's all the minnows schooled up together. Now I know that some of you guys weren't subscribed two years ago when we first caught these bass, so I'm gonna give you a quick glimpse at how we got to this point. So almost exactly two years ago, Liz and I were out there on the Delta and we caught Bonnie and Clyde off the same cypress tree. Here he is. Look at there. That is a little one. And Liz has one. You got one too? <laughs> oh Lord, we've been fishing for an hour and I ain't got a bite and all of a sudden we double up off this tree. That's perfect. These would be two perfect bass to go in the aquarium. <laughs> Mine's a little bitty guy, but hey, that's perfect. Double up at the same time. Delta bass. What do you guys think? We're gonna need some help naming them. We started them out in a 55 gallon aquarium and they lived in it for about seven to eight months and we could tell that they were quickly outgrowing it, especially Bonnie. <laughs> Old Red had to go into defense mode there. So that's when we decided to upgrade and we got them to 300 gallon aquarium. They lived in it for about the same amount of time, about eight months. And then that's when we decided we were either gonna have to let them go or build them this beautiful backyard pond. And here's some of the highlights over the last few years. Wow. Spit it out, ate it again. Spit it out. The three-eighths ounce jig. pretty wild <laughs> all right I got some earthworms I'm gonna drop them in the pond to see if we can lure one of the catfish out but I'm also gonna drop them right in front of the bass just to see if they're interested in something other than a minnow and some big ones. There's Bonnie right down there. That thing gets down there and hits the jets. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, little interest in a worm. Got it. Huh. That's pretty cool. I thought it would take them a little bit longer than that to start being able to feed them, but I guess they're already adjusted. Took her one day. I think she's lazy. She's always had food given directly to her and never had to chase it down. Oh yeah. Ooh, we about got a topwater blow up on that one. 
there's a little jet right down here that shoots things out that direction. Clyde is playing this little cave right here. I'm going to throw one over there. See if I can get him to come out. <laughs> Clyde came out and got it. He turned sideways and scooped it off the rocks. <laughs> These fish are lazy. Let's see if I can get one up there on top of the lily pads. And she knows it's up there. Ooh. It's about to sliver off. That mistake. You get it. So I think what I'm going to do is start dumping my leftover worms and worm dirt. Like maybe in this corner over here and create a worm bed. That way whenever I need them I can just go over there and dig them up. Clive's out smelling that last worm. And one other thing I may do is create a little bait well right over in this area and either stock shiners or crappie minnows or something like that. So whatever you guys would like to see us feed them, leave a comment below, whether it be threadfin chad, gizzard chad, or whatever. And I may try to buy them and raise them in a tank. That way I can just come out here, grab them out of the tank, dump them in, or hand feed the bass, or whatever we need to do. And also a lot of you guys asked about adding crawfish. As much as I would love to add crawfish, they burrow down in the rocks and the liner is up under that. So they crawfish eat through a liner. They also eat through dams and things like that in a pond. So there's no way we could ever put a crawfish in here unless maybe the bass come up and eat it out of our hands. Time to see if Sheriff wants a worm. Ooh, that was quick. Let's try the little hand feeding. Yep. <laughs> this ought to be interesting. <laughs> Last one, Moby. And folks, be sure you subscribe because we are putting our two most savage fish. Moby is getting moved into the 300 gallon tank with Sheriff, and we got a lot of cool things planned for when that happens. So, hope y'all enjoyed the video, and we'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.